Welcome. So here we go. What I want to do is just kind of give you an introductory video on graphing logarithmic equations. Now, um, I'm not going to go through the, where the logarithmic equation comes from, but I just want to go through, you know, if we know what a logarithm is, assume, um, how are we going to go ahead and graph it? So by going through this, what we have, um, logarithm equation, let's just go with log base b of x. All right? And what we're going to do when we're graphing logarithm equations, we're going to graph them, but we're going to have transformations when we're dealing with this. Um, so when dealing with it in a transformation phase, we can write it as y equals a times log base b of x minus h plus k. And now when we talk about it in this format, we know that um, our a, our h, and our k, these are all going to affect our graph. And we could also even um, write in another coefficient for the x as far as talking about how that's going to change and affect our problem with our graph. But this is what we call kind of like our transformation phase. And what we're going to do when we're graphing um, a logarithm graph, what I'm going to have you do is graph originally the parent graph. And then what we're going to do is we're going to apply the transformation. So if the graph is shifting to the left or shifting to the right or shifting up or shifting down or re being reflected, um, what we're going to do is we're just going to take that parent graph and we're going to then draw our final graph over here. Now, what's different when dealing with logarithms, and for most students, you know, when you're looking at your calculator, it's, oh, let me just do it on my calculator. Well, and that's great, but your lot of calculators are only going to graph your y equals log base 10 of x. And that's going to be a little bit different because our, what our, determining on what our base is, that's going to change what different points. Now, the one thing we know is when we're graphing this, all logarithms, unless we have any kind of transformation, we know that's going to have an asymptote at x equals 0. We know the domain is always going to be from 0 to infinity. And the range is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. That's going to be for our parent graph and for all logarithm graphs, unless our graph is transformed. However, um, and they're also, I'm sorry, another point that they're all going to have is an x-intercept at 1 comma 0. All right. So now these are some characteristics that we're going to have. However, now how fast our graph is going to you know, kind of increase after it's past the x-intercept all really depends on our base. So what we're going to have to do when doing this is we're going to have to create an xy table. Now, if I was going to create an xy table for um, base 10, what I would do is I would just uh, rewrite this in exponential form. And therefore, I can kind of choose some values that I want for x you know, to kind of be. And usually, our, uh, some easy ones that we could do is, you know, what if x equaled uh, 1 and x equaled our base? Well, therefore, y would have to be 0. And here, y would have to be 1. So therefore, you can just plot those two points. You know, you have 1 comma 0, which you know your x-intercept. And then also, you could do uh, 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, up 1. So your next point would be over there. So this graph is going to um, increase very slowly. But what if I did? an equation where I said y equals log base 2 of x. Now again, log base 2 of x is going to have the same features as this parent graph. However, when I rewrite this as 2 to the y equals x, and I create a table of values for this, um, what we notice is uh, when I put 0 in for y, I'm going to have x equals 1. And then when y equals 1, x equals 2. So therefore, it would be over 2, up 1. So I can have two relatively very different, very different graphs just based on what the base is. So it's going to be very important when graphing these, um, when graphing logarithmic equations, what I'm going to want to do is first go ahead and graph the parent graph with the base. And I do that by just creating a table of values. And a lot of times, I like to, you know, you can also graph it when you have your a there as well. And I, I don't like to deal with the reflection, but I do like to deal with it. If I'm multiplying this by a multiple of, let's say, 5 or 8 or anything, I'm going to multiply that in so I get that parent graph. Um, so I can get that table of values as close as possible. Because sometimes that is going to change exactly um, what our function is going to look like, especially even if I have something like log base 10 of you know, 3x. That's going to affect my graph, and especially what it's going to as far as my x-intercepts and everything. That's going to change my parent graph. So I'm going to want to make sure if there's any transformations inside this graph, or if it's being multiplied by any number in front, I'm going to multiply these. These are all going to be my dilations that are going to affect the graph. However, then what I do is then I go through and I go through the reflections. Now remember, when I'll just kind of talk through the reflections, 
because I have a lot of examples of me working through the problems. Remember, when a is negative, we're going to reflect over the x-axis. So you take this graph and reflect it over the x-axis. If your x inside of your function is negative, therefore, you're going to reflect it about the y-axis. When your h, whenever you're adding or subtracting inside the function, that's going to be shifting your graph left to right. And remember, this represents as the opposite. So if it's x minus h, therefore, you're going to shift your graph h units to the right. If it was uh, x plus whatever your number h, you're going to shift it that many units to the left. And then k is going to represent your numbers that you're adding or subtracting outside your function. And that's going to shift the graph up or down. When k is positive, you shift up. When k is the negative, you're going to shift down. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's just a brief review of how we're going to um, graph your logarithmic equation. Um, you know, here's just one example of log base 10 of x. And then what we're going to do is apply whatever transformations in my examples to be able to finish off the rest of the graphs. So therefore, I hope that helped. Thanks so much.